Hello there and welcome back to Technical Service 101 channel. Today we're going to be covering a basic outline of thermal properties of the relative thermal consequences of wattage, amperage and voltage. We're going to be looking at various types of parallel wiring layouts and we're going to be looking at constant voltage and constant current drivers. So here's the equipment that we're going to be working with today. We have two Vero cobs there, Vero E29 cobs, a couple of Osram drivers and a variable voltage bench power supply that we also use here. You'll see it quite a lot in the other videos. So what we're looking at here today is a passively cooled 200 by 200 by 20 anodized heatsink. We've mounted a block connector to one end and drilled and tapped the four holes each for the two Vero cobs and as you can see we've got positive wired to one side of the cob and negative wired to the other side of the cob. Very basic wiring pattern as you can see they're just solder tags and you've also got a clip that you can use for uh, more industrial applications there in the bottom left hand corner the little insert so there's our Vero cob, big beefy fella, and there's our basic pattern layout of the cob giving all the details. As you can see there, the little plug-in port at the bottom there with its uh, detail of its Molex Pico Easy Mate connector. And so for this first one we're going to be wiring a pair of independent drivers, one to each cob. So we just simply go positive and negative, positive and negative. As you can see there, the negatives are the two middle terminals, the positives are the two outer terminals, as denoted by the brown and the blue wires. Just check that they're nice and attached. And here's the diagram of our layout that we're drive using with the two drivers, driving independently to the two cobs. As you can see there, these are driving at approximately 36 volt DC at 1500 milliamps. This is a little below the total permissible drive current of these cobs as well. Well below it, in fact. So they'll be underdriven. And here's the test equipment that we'll be using to establish all of our settings today. On the left, we have a Hylec multimeter. We'll be using this as a thermometer today. So anytime you see that on screen, it will be reading temperature in centigrade. And to do that, we use its thermal probe, which is a little thermistor on the end of a pair of wires. We've also got a multimeter clamp meter, which today we'll just simply be using in the DC volts range. So when you see that one on the screen, that will be reading the DC voltage. And in order to assess the impact of our variations to voltage and temperature, we'll be using that fairly basic light meter, industrial lux meter. And on the far right, we have a basic wall plug watt meter or multimeter of a sort, uh, VA meter specifically. And this has got a range of settings from voltage, from mains voltage to total consumption and cost. So back to the heatsink, and we need to identify where the centre of one of the cobs is, just to get the, the most accurate temperature reading we can. There is actually a, a, a thermal sensor point on the cob itself, but it's a little bit too small to accept my thermistor, and I don't really want to damage the cob. So we're a mere five millimetres away from the uh, thermal boundary there, and aluminium is incredibly good at conducting energy so uh, we'll be reading pretty much directly there and here's our typical settings so 80 CRI 2100 milliamps 36.8 volts it's not particularly efficient there 123 lumens per watt but do look at that maximum current 4.2 amps so that would double that 9500 lumens there's your basic electrical specifications of the Osram drivers and here's our first setup. This is now the pair of drivers connected to our passively cooled heatsink. And we're watching the temperature on the far left, the voltage in the middle, and the wattage on the right. 
And what we're establishing here is where the thermal equilibrium is for this device. So after about 15, 20 minutes, we begin to see the temperatures leveling out and even going backwards. And this is in an indication that we have achieved thermal equilibrium. The amount of energy that we're putting into the device is equal to the amount of energy being put out of the device. And so we can see there that at 36.9 volts, 138 watts, we're a reasonably comfortable 70C at the heatsink. And now we're going to drive this with just a single one of those drivers in parallel. This is just a simple matter of bridging the positives to the neg to the positives and the negatives to the negatives and just simply connecting the one driver. So now what we're do doing is we're dividing the total 1500 milliamps between the two cobs, giving them about 750 milliamps a piece at 36 volts. Parallel divides the amps and maintains the volts. Series divides the volts and maintains the amps. We'll be covering series wiring in a later video. And here's that in action with the again the thermometer on your left and the uh, wattage meter on your right and you can now see that our thermal equilibrium at this drive current is right down in the 40 degrees centigrade so about half of what it was before a little over half and of course at about half the wattage as well. That was previously in the 140 watt range. Now this again is going to be utilizing the um, parallel wiring that you saw in the previous one, only this time we're going to be using our variable voltage regulated power supply. And you just simply wire the mains lead to the uh, mains terminals there and you've got six DC terminals divided down a common center line so you have you have all of the positives to the left three positive terminals to the left and three negative terminals to the right and we also have a little potentiometer on board there which is how we vary the voltage just simply put a screwdriver into it and turn it up and down and there's the diagram layout same as the single cob just simply bridging the positive from one block to, over to the other block and again this divides the amperage while maintaining the uh, constant voltage. And as you can see there, this power supply will comfortably drive from actually more like 30 volts up to about 40 volts DC on the potentiometer, and that's 0 to 10 amps. While we're performing these sort of tests, we need to pay attention to the maximum ratings. As you can see there, we're safe up to about 150 degrees C temporarily on the cob, and uh, a maximum drive current of 4,200 milliamps about 65 volts and here's that in action where we're varying the voltage and you can see its direct effect on the wattage and with this variable voltage power supply we're able to exceed the 1500 milliamps that we were driving before and we're actually much nearer to about 2.3 amps so 2300 milliamps at around 36.8 volts and here's uh, just to indicate the minimum drive voltage that these need. So as you watch the light dim and the voltage drop off, the light goes out completely at around 30 volts, there or thereabouts. And here's that coming back on. So as we come up to 30, the cob lights up. And then as we head off to 36, it becomes very bright indeed. Uh, you'll also notice the even way that each of those uh, individual LEDs dimmed out there. And here's why not to buy cheap Chinese LEDs. If you watch the top left hand corner of this cob, the uh, last ones to go out there will be having a much lower resistance and will be much hotter than the rest. Okay, so here's our angular displacement graph for 120 degree uh, viewing angle cob. And we'll be taking all of our lux measurements in that 100, 100 degree zone, which is probably only 5 or 10 degrees uh, from center. So uh, if you take these at about 80% of these figures, that will give you an overall lighting temperature over a square meter. 
and here's with a single driver uh, driving them in parallel at 750 milliamps and that gives us around 35 37 thousand lux and with the two drivers we're doubling that up and getting much nearer to 70 75 thousand lux so you can see how the uh, the power and the voltage input are very much matched by the light output so that's a very linear transformation and here we are with the variable power supply and you can see the wattage rising there on the right the voltage on the left and the uh, lux in thousands in the middle and as we go up to the maximum output of the driver we're getting towards 80,000 there so a significant gain over the um, underdriven LED drive units of course that will come with a, uh, a temperature burden in the in as much as the 70 degrees uh, thermal equilibrium we were seeing earlier won't be matched at those sort of wattages you'll see a respective increase in heat sink temperature consequently okay and that's back down to our uh, uh, stated drive voltage and as you can see we're back again to around that 50,000 lux and out she goes so I hope this has been a reasonable introduction into voltage controlled drivers current controlled drivers and variable power supplies dimmable power supplies only intended really as the most basic of outlines but just showing really as much as I possibly can that this uh, certainly isn't rocket science and it is doable by somebody even like myself with a very limited knowledge of electrical engineering thanks for watching hope to be releasing a video of a pre-production unit very soon will be being made over the next week or so and we'll see you same time same place when the next video is ready thanks for watching please rate and share and subscribe if you like